Hello everyone. So I just began my tarot series, but there's something else I wanted to start as well. I have a beautiful book called Fairy Craft that I decided I wanted to read out loud and share the legends and stories and guided meditations, etc. with you. Um, I thought we could do them together and it might be a good and calming and positive experience that we can go through together as friends. So. The book begins with a poem called The Fairy Prince. A fairy prince has snared my heart, hiding it deep within his own. From all things mortal kept apart, were roots and brambles overgrown. Guard it well against the light, and keep it green and shadowed there. Though I have searched by starry night, and in the spring sun warm and fair. Not prince nor heart may yet be found, but promise whispers on the breeze, and sweetest music in the ground, led my senses with their tease. So I must venture in between, where dusky rose sings her lament, and seek by twilight what lies unseen, with hope to heal what has been rent. So I'm not going to read the preface, but you can pick up the book yourself and read it if you're that curious. But I'll start with the introduction. It begins with a quote. This is what Mr. William B. Yeats wrote to me while this study was in progress concerning the Celtic fairy kingdom. I am certain that it exists and will someday be studied as it was studied by Kirk. This is from W.Y. Evans Wentz from the Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries. The world of fairy has always been with us, from the time of our ancient ancestors and their deep connection with the land forged from the need to survive, through the rise of Christianity, merging new beliefs with the old ways. Through the Industrial Revolution and humankind's rising need to tame nature, all the way into the 21st century, beliefs and practices have changed much over the centuries, as fluid and mercurial as the shape-shifting realm and the other world itself. And yet, through all that, the core of truth remains. One hundred years ago, the anthropologist Walter Evans Wentz undertook a remarkable task. Over the course of many months, he traveled to a great number of locations within the Celtic landscape of Scotland, Ireland, Wales, Brittany, the Isle of Man, and Cornwall, and interviewed those who had personal tales to tell of contact with the fairy realm, or valuable gems of folklore. Much of the... I'm sorry. Much of the eyewitnesses he managed to interview for the fairy faith in Celtic countries were extremely elderly, and it must have seemed as though contact with fairy was a fading relic of the past, a victim of the rising tide of industry and technology. Yet here and now, in the era of rapid progress and almost unbelievable technology, it is clear that the fairy faith is not only alive, but well and thriving. After all, here you are, reading this book. Why fairy craft and not fairy faith? For good or bad, we do not live in an age of faith. We live in an age of science and proven results. However, there is no need to see this as being in opposition to the practice of magic or interaction with otherworldly beings. On the contrary, the need for ex experimental evidence and transformative results from our actions and interactions can do nothing but strengthen what is true and enable us to discard what is false or ineffective. These results may be subtle indeed, but for those who make genuine contact with the fairy realm, life will not be the same again. Of course, this is also an age of quick fixes and instant gratification, which is a path that benefits no one. In order to truly gain wisdom and evolve as spiritual beings, we need the discipline of craft. The term fairy faith implies a passive, though respectful, belief passed down through generations without it necessarily involving any experimentation, effort, or discovery. Fairy craft, on the other hand, is more evocative of a practical approach of work and collaboration with the fairy realm. The craft is, of course, also a well-known term for Wicca and witchcraft. For much the same reason, it is a discipline that requires practice and skill and produces results. So are you ready to roll up your sleeves? Of course, it's not all work and no play. This is fairy we're talking about, after all. 
The craft is, in essence, referring to the art of integrating theory into our day-to-day -day lives, not as a form of escapism, but as a way of truly engaging in the world on a deeper level. A note on the spelling. For those of you drawn to this subject for the first time, the spelling of fairy slash fairy, as opposed to the usual fairy, is used to differentiate between the modern, disempowered fantasy creation and the authentic living beings, and tradition, which can be surprisingly different from expectations. Before we go any further, what exactly is fairy? This is followed by a quote, something from the dawn of time, who could possibly put a name to that? They were certainly no exactly when it comes to fairy. What we understand as the fairy realm today is an umbrella term that covers a huge variety of beings and phenomena. From the Piskies of Cornwall to the tall and noble she of the Gaelic lands. But the fairy realm is by no means solely Celtic in nature or tradition. It encompasses the spirits of place and nature and otherworldly beings of the entire globe, which can vary in size and appearance as much as the landscape of the world itself, from the small yet potent to beings of almost unfathomable size. They are the intelligence behind the living forth of force of the planet, and as such they reflect the wondrous variety of our vibrant world. Their nature may be highly individual, part of a mass consciousness, or anywhere between. But they are living things, with their own existences, functions, and goals, who inhabit a realm that is only separated from our own through a difference in frequency or resonance. Essentially, they are around us all the time, in a more fluid and intangible form than our own comparatively solid reality. This makes sense on a scientific level, when you realize that all matter is essentially energy, and its solidity is solely dependent on the speed at which the atoms are vibrating. Can you wonder that the people of the hills don't care to be confused with the painty winged wand waving sugar and shake your head set of imposters? We can add to our understanding by taking a moment to look at what they are not. For there are many misconceptions lurking in the guise of certain New Age teachings. They are not reflections of aspects of our personality, though they may choose to reflect those of us at times. Reducing magic and all other worlds to psychology is, in my opinion, one of the most harmful developments in magical practice of the modern age. Neither are they all tiny-winged, striped sock-wearing beings. Though they may appear that way if they so choose, this is simply a modern fashion overhaul of the Victorian flower fairy. Fairy beings do not simply giggle and play all day, though many are indeed fun-loving. But they are as much a balance of light and dark as we are ourselves. I would also like to emphasize that working with them is about achieving mutual goals, not self-help. They do not exist purely to enhance our lives, though of course our lives are indeed greatly enhanced by their presence. What is crucial to understand is that fairy beings are our close relatives in the spiritual realm, hence why they were and still are often referred to as cousins. And we are already connected to them, whether we are aware of it or not. The door is open. We need merely to learn how to perceive it and have the courage and discipline to walk through.